And finally, on this, pal on this panel, we have Dina Moore, a founding me board member of YES, the Jaeger Van Dusen Environmental Steward Group, and a rancher. And so welcome very much. And where is Neeland? Um, Neeland is right, right up there. Um, <laughs> we're on the, the, veal, the eel, the Van Dusen, and the Jaeger, and we're sort of due east. How's that? So thank you. Thank you. Good. We're, Mark, we're, did I get it right? Mark's our supervisor. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, good morning. I'm, I'm humbled to be here, and I really want to say I'm really humbled by um, particularly Cheryl's comments this morning. Um, and I guess I have the Feel, felt a huge responsibility this morning after she spoke. I am married to a fifth generation rancher. Um, this land resource that my husband's family has managed has been in his family for five generations. Um, so I've developed a passion for um, our watershed and our community and um, the sort of work that we've engaged in. Um, in 1999, we were um, threatened with the threat of being listed by the Environmental Protection Agency as being sediment impaired. Um, and from that threat, um, we formed a watershed group, a working watershed group, and we encompass up in the Van Dusen, the upper Van Dusen, 80,000 contiguous acres that are represented by um, ranchers. And, and we are a voluntary group. Um, and we've worked incentive based. So I had a few thoughts that I'd like to share with you today that sort of follow the theme. Um, and I know you're going to have to hold up those cards for me because give me a microphone and I could just entertain you guys, well, entertain me for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I've come to understand over the last little bit is that um, collaboration is the key to healthy watersheds and communities. Um, and I define that, I define su success as sustainability, trust, and partnerships. Um, and I wanted, and Mark earlier when he was talking about it, defined partnerships as collaboratives. I think we can look at it from both, both, both ways. So let's initially start with success. Um, we've got a little pamphlet back there representing our group, and it's sort of one of the things that we've talked about. Um, success. Coming together is a beginning. Um, it can be fear-based, and our coming together as a group was fear-based, but it has led us to do some incredibly positive things. Working together is progress. Um, I know you guys all know that model, um, forming, norming, storming, all of that sort of stuff. We've gone through all those levels, just as I'm sure the North Coast regional partnership has, and staying together is success. Um, and I look at, from my perspective, the benefit and value of multi-generational landowners bringing to that sort of a key idea of staying together is success. Um, it brings tenacity, patience, um, and I think there's a key to understanding that cycles come and cycles go, but also staying together is success means that um, it has to be fun and enjoyable for all. Sustainability. Sustainability to me is a three-legged stool. Um, it has to be environmentally sound. And I think when I think about the environmental soundness, one of the things I'd like to share is just as we heard um, about the salmon going up your creek. In, in my creek, three years ago, we had a run of Chinook salmon, unlike my husband had ever seen. And it was a run that he had heard of from his grandmother. And I think when I look at our children, the sixth generation, they got to see this run of salmon, and I think it really sort of shared with them the environmental um, benefits and values of all this sort of work that we're doing together. Um, socially responsible. I think that, again, whenever we're, we're looking at sustainability, we have to talk about what is socially responsible. Um, and... I think that within communities, we need to look at how are we going to build social capital. And again, I think the efforts such as demonstrated through this diverse partnership really helps us um, achieve that goal. Um, and then finally, it has to be economically viable. And obviously, that's one of the themes that you guys are talking about today, and I cannot emphasize that enough. 
um, economic viability, particularly in Humboldt County, has some real challenges these days. Um, but what I would like to share with you is what this sort of work has helped my small community do. And over the, the period of years that we've been involved in restoration, counting your project as well as a variety of other projects, we have been able to bring into our 80,000 acres about $6 million to do restoration work. And through that, we have been able to keep contractors working in a time when there was not a log market and they did not have the availability of making a living that way um, in a sustainable fashion. And so I think we're really proud of being able to help our community um, remain economically viable. So one of the elements I think also that's important about this that I talked about was success with sustainability, trust, and partnerships. I'd like to speak to a moment just to you about trust. Um, trust, and I'm going to use it sort of an, as an acronym, trust. T stands for transparent in all of our dealings with each other to build trust, we have to be transparent. Um, R, we have to be respectful, responsible, and robust. And again, one of the conversation pieces that I've heard this morning is the diversity and the robust conversations that you have all engaged in. And I think that that is absolutely invaluable in these processes. Um, U stands for underestimated and unique. I think that trust can be underestimated um, and it's unique to have trust and I think it's invaluable to have trust. Um, S stands for synergy, social capital, and stakeholders. Again, all stakeholders need to be at the table. Uh, you need to have a diverse body of stakeholders at the table. Um, and finally, T. T is it takes time, and then our goal, I hope, through these sorts of expanded conversations and works is that it is transferable and that we can all transfer sort of our knowledge about how, how this works. Partnerships. I'd like to talk just briefly about partnerships and what are involved in partnerships and what you need to have strong partnerships. Um, partnerships require leadership. Um, and I think it's key, and I think, again, you guys are modeling really well the leadership that is out there, but partnerships do require strong leadership. Um, and from our work, what we really have discovered and what I've discovered in other work that I've done throughout the nation with other voluntary landowner-led groups is that really a powerful work can be done with voluntary incentive-based models. It needs to be innovative. Um, needs to be collaborative by nature. We need to define common goals and common objectives. And I think, as you saw with Mark's um, presentation earlier this morning, the overlapping circles, one of the things that we've talked about is that 80-20 rule. We need to find that 80% that we agree upon as we're beginning our trust and our relationships, and that will allow us to work on that 20% that maybe we don't share in common once we've built those relationships. Um, and basically, one of the huge challenges for all of us is when we're working on in partnerships, it's really important to leave sort of our own personal agendas and egos at the door. So, in closing, what I'd like to say is thank you. We really appreciate this partnership. We appreciate what it has done for us. But I think we need to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I hope that I've shared with you really what I believe is Kate, what this, this sort of diverse partnership is, is, can do and succeed at. But as a very small project proponent, voluntary-based, this model is not economically sound for us. Getting funding from the IRWMP is not economically sound for us. And I'm really sad to say that we have, over the period of time that we've been involved in these projects, waited six months for payments. Currently, right now, I have a payment that we submitted in May that we have not yet been paid for. And that payment is to an accounting firm. And this is the only project that we've ever had to hire an accounting firm to work with us because of the labor compliance element of this project. So I would say to you, there are some challenges. If you want to assist folks like us, they have to be resolved. Um, and then the other part of it, too, is, again, when, when we're looking at sort of who is included 
in this diverse model. I am just so appreciative of my RCDs, our RCDs. They've been absolutely invaluable to us. But I guess what I would like to see is a show of hands of folks in the room who are here who are representing working landscapes that make a living. Look around. Not a whole lot of us. Um, I would like to suggest to you perhaps that there may be a place in, at your table, just as there has been for the tribe, but a larger place at the table for those of us who really do make our living on working landscapes. And thank you very much.